Hi there, welcome to The Uplift. We have a great show for you today with a cast of great characters. A man driving 1,800 miles across the country in a tractor. What is the reason behind his journey? We'll let you know. And a beloved town icon, what she did for 58 years that is being celebrated now. Two selfless sisters selling their toys, a big sacrifice for a kid as we know, but they have a good reason for it. And we bring you to a horse farm in New York City, an unlikely location, but an important mission. Plus, we introduce you to a man who went viral for handing out flowers and hugs. Who is this stranger behind that video? All of that, plus our most heartwarming videos of the week, you are watching The Uplift. Hello there, welcome to The Uplift. I'm Nate Burleson. We're going to start with our most heartwarming videos of the week, beginning with this one. Kids love to do that water bottle trick. You know which one I'm talking about, where they flip the, I knew I was going to fail, where they flip the bottle and it lands right in the air. But this is the thing. Apparently, adults are very interested in this too. A little girl at a recent Yankees game was trying to do that trick, and fans were invested in this. Check this out. There was a game going on right there, but she stole the show when she made it, and the crowd went wild. How about that? Absolute perfect timing. I couldn't do it. I don't have the skills, but she did. Okay, this video shows a three-year-old Mateus who really loves his dog. How are you so much, Mia? Mia, this is my baby. That's your baby? Yeah. Dale un besito. This is not your baby. Okay. This is my baby. That just melts my heart. Honey, I know you're watching. I want a dog because that's how I'm going to act. Take a look at this next video from actress Shay Mitchell. It proves even stars deal with funny parenting moments. My pandemic baby who is now a toddler oh making friends at the park. <laughs> I love these videos so much. You gotta make a friend however you can. All right, our next video shows a sweet surprise between two strangers. Take a look. Sorry to bother you. Is it okay if you can just hold these? Have a lovely day. That man with the flowers is Harrison Pollock, and that's not the first time he's done that. Harrison has become known for surprising people, and our Caitlin O'Kane spoke with him about spreading kindness. Excuse me, is it okay if you can just hold these quickly? It's probably not every day you get a bouquet of flowers, especially from someone you don't know on a busy street. Those are actually for you. Have a nice day. But 22-year-old Harrison Pollock is hoping to give more people that experience, the experience of kindness from a complete stranger. It's just the fact that there obviously has been a lot of negativity that's been going on recently. I just want to do my part to do something that is going to help to make people be like, wow, there's still faith in people. Like, people are still good. What's your favorite food? Fish and chips, man. Harrison has been making videos since he was a kid. What started out as pranks and skits has evolved. I guess it's not your usual prank where it's just sort of, you know, doing something mischievous and then sort of making someone angry. But instead, you know, you're, I guess you are pranking them in a sense, but they're happy with the outcome. Sometimes he buys people their groceries using his own money. Other times he holds a sign offering a hug. His goal is simply spreading joy, but even he is surprised by some reactions. When I actually filmed the very viral video when I gave the lady flowers, after I walked off and I said, have a good day, I actually had no idea how her reaction was. But then when I saw her reaction and she actually cried, I was just like, wow. It really just made me feel some type of way. And then 
I remember afterwards I actually went back up to her and she was really grateful and just so happy and I know that's just something that she's going to remember for the rest of her life. The college student from Melbourne, Australia doesn't get anything in return for his kind gestures, except for some joy himself. It just makes my heart feel full and happy just to give back. It's just something that's always been something that's just made me smile. He has more than 3 million TikTok followers, and only a small fraction are from Australia. So he's not super recognizable yet, and still has that surprise factor when he goes out with a friend, a hidden camera, and a smile. When I was doing a video where I had one of those signs that said, if you're missing someone, hug me, there was one guy in particular that came up to me, and he came up and he just gave me this hug, and I asked him, are you missing someone? And he's like, no, I just really needed a hug. And then it just really made me think that everyone has a little battle that they're going through. And because of that, I always just say to myself, under no matter what circumstance, if I'm feeling happy, sad, just be kind to everyone because you never know what anyone's going through. For all of you social media influencers that will literally do anything to go viral, this is how you go viral, but in a good way. Coming up, we meet two little sisters who are willing to sell their toys for something much greater than themselves. What can inspire them to make such a sacrifice? Plus, why are these kids cheering for Miss Judy Johnson? We will tell you after the break. Judy Johnson has become an icon in her town for holding the same job for 58 years. CBS Boston's Rachel Holt has the story. Cheers for the final day of school at Honeywell Elementary. And a special applause for Judy Johnson. The Wellesley Crossing Guard taking her post on Grove Street for the final time. So this is the last day before this building is torn down and we build a brand new Honeywell school and it seemed fitting that we also honor Judy, our crossing guard, who's been here almost for the entire life of the school. 58 years to be exact and now in her 80s through tears and hugs, Judy is retiring from the job she loves. Thank you, Miss. You're welcome, sweetie. <laughs> What's your favorite part about this job? The smiles on the kids' faces. The location's beautiful. What more could I ask? As a working mom, to be to know that my kids can get safely to school. She's there, cheerful, bright, early morning, rain or shine. It's just been totally and completely rewarding. I've loved it every day, every minute of it. Met, met some wonderful people, wonderful children, parents, dogs. Even though she's been halting cars for more than half a century, there's been no slowing down for Judy even in her signature high heels. I said, well, I, I'm old now and I've shrunk and the heels have gotten shorter through the years. And I love the heels. Oh. <laughs> She's been iconic, you know, my whole life, their lives. I mean, kids come back, say hi to her, uh, you know, give her the love. And you saw that today. Welcome, have a great summer. I'm gonna miss you. I never realized I'd grow up an old here, <laughs> but I have. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. Not all heroes wear capes. Shout out to Judy Johnson. Enjoy your retirement. So not many kids would be willing to sell their toys. I know I'm not giving up my G.I. Joe and He-Man action figures for nobody. But two little sisters from Minnesota are making that sacrifice, but it's for a good reason. CBS Minnesota's Reg Chapman has more. Under the blue tent off 36th Avenue in Robbinsdale are two young ladies on a mission. Our brother, he needs to go to college down in Louisiana, and it's, 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 it's really expensive. Really, it's more expensive than you would think. Stephanie and Deja Lewis gave up all that's important to them. And come over here, we got movies. We got the new ones, Free Guy, Turning Red, Big Hero 6, Wrong Gone Wrong. To sell, so they can raise money to help send Big Brother Ty to college. I know what we can do. We can have a garage sale. And then she's like, well, we can do a lemonade stand too. So now we're just doing both to earn some extra money to kind of get him there. We just took everything. We were like, he has to go to college. We got to do it. 
Ty graduated from Robbinsdale Cooper High School and has been accepted to study computer science at Xavier University in Louisiana. It was the best option I had. It's one of the best HBCUs out there, so I decided to go there. His biggest concern, paying for it all. He's grateful for help from his little sisters. It's a good feeling to know that they care. I mean, that's like the main thing. People stopping by happy to support the cause. I'm really proud. He, he graduated high school. He got through all his grades. I know I have to help my brother so he can go to college and he can live his dream as he wants to. No one is more proud of what's going on than mom and grandma. Kids, you know, go back and forth, you know, and argue and mess with each other, but they always have looked up to, you know, their older brother. And so they've always just been really sweet girls that always, you know, wanted to help. Proving the bond between brothers and sisters is strong. Oh, I absolutely love that. Shout out to those two little sisters. All right, now take a look at this video that shows a runner named Madison making her way through the finish line of the Buffalo Marathon. Now there is a little extra cheering for Madison because her boyfriend, Christopher, was waiting there to pop the question. Of course, Madison said yes. She also said the finish line of the marathon became the start line for the rest of her life with her best friend. You can find more videos like this on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash uplift. Coming up, cross country road trips are long, of course, and this 76 year old is doing it in a tractor. What's his motivation? Plus, you may not expect to find this in New York City, a horse farm, but it's not just any horse farm. It has a very special mission. Stick around to find out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Uplift. We are now going to introduce you to Maya Marshall, a woman who is hoping to change little girls' lives with a coloring book. CBS Minnesota's Susan Elizabeth Littlefield has more. Maya Marshall is a woman of many talents. She's a musician. You ever wonder why they call you pretty? A social worker and now a writer. Hey pretty, you've got that magic, you've got that sauce, you've got that glow. And she's spreading that glow with her coloring book. She hopes to light up the souls of little girls. She got the idea after a student she was counseling was being called mean names. I decided to uh, try something new with my girls group and every time that they walked in, I would say, you know, hey pretty, how are you? Hey, pretty. And so just the reaction that I got from that, like some girls would be like, oh, you talking to me? Oh. Or and some girls would keep walking, not knowing that I was even speaking to them because they were not used to that language. And so when I seen what an impact it made on them, I was like, oh, I got to do something about this. And she did. Hey, pretty, hey, First, she hey, wrote this pretty, song. You ever wonder why they call you pretty? Then she put it into writing and drawing with a coloring book. Representation, Yes, that's absolutely. a big part of this too. That's number one, yes. So that uh, black children, black girls specifically can see themselves depicted in art. You know, it makes you feel like a boss. So we kind of like, it's kind of Beyonce-esque. Building self-esteem and self-worth so girls can write and color their own stories. I had the opportunity to just watch, just observe some girls uh, flipping through the pages of the book and they were pointing out the pages that they thought were them. And I was like, oh, oh, if purpose was a moment, that's what it was. That's what it was. Now that's what I call living in your purpose. Okay, so what started as a joke took a 76 year old across the country on his tractor. But why did he do it? CBS Minnesota's John Lordson shows us why. The whole thing sort of began as a joke. Mike Atkinson's brother-in-law always talked about needing a tractor. So Mike would sarcastically offer to drive his tractor from Bellingham, Washington to Perch Lake, Minnesota. Then one day, it wasn't a joke. And finally I thought, you know, at 76, I could use a challenge like that, so I'm going to do that. Before he left on the 1,800-mile journey, Mike got another reason to go. His brother Dan was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And it really uh, hit our family really hard, and of course, there's not much you can do to help. Uh, so I just thought, you know what, I think I can uh, raise donations by doing this. So he did. He drove through snow, sleet, and at times, an unforgiving sun. The tractor's right wheels were always a foot from the ditch, 
Mike's John Deere tops out at about 15 miles an hour, which is a major reason why it took him six weeks to travel from Washington to Minnesota. The miles went by slowly, but the donations piled up quickly. By the time he reached Minnesota, Mike had raised more than $50,000 for Parkinson's research. He'd spend his nights in motels, and during the day, people would give him donations and treats. Uh, one guy stopped me and uh, he had beef jerky and, and another couple of gals stopped and they had uh, uh, chocolate brownies. I really enjoy uh, meeting people. And they enjoyed meeting the tractor guy and his 15 mile an hour mission to help others. He's the most caring, genuine, passionate person I know and it was for such a good cause that we're all supportive and we're just thankful he made it here in one piece. Doesn't that sound like the perfect road trip? Just me, myself, and my tractor. Coming up, meet two families who were linked during World War II, one helping the other hide from the Nazis. Now, more than 80 years later, they are thanking them in a big way. Plus, what's a horse farm doing in Queens, New York? A lot of things. We'll take you to Gallup NYC for a look at what makes it so special. Not everyone knows how to ride a horse, but maybe that's because they don't live near one. One company has brought horses to New York City, and they're doing more than just galloping around. Caitlin O'Kane has the story. You might be surprised to find out where this horse farm is located. In Queens, New York, horseback riding might not seem like a typical New York City activity, but for the riders at Gallup NYC, it's an important part of their day. That's because many of the riders that come here are veterans and people with disabilities. Horseback riding is their therapy. They become your friend, like you can talk to them, you give them, pet them, you can hug them. It's like they're like, they're not just like an animal you ride, they're like your companion, your buddy. 16-year-old Olivia Diver has only been riding horses for a few months, but she says she's already felt the benefits. Well, it helped me come out of my comfort zone and be like less, less shy and less like, like in my like in my shell. It helped me come out of my shell and out of my shadow. It made me feel like more like safe and calm and happy. James Wilson is executive director at Gallup NYC. He says there are many ways horses can be therapeutic. The horse sees the world in the way that somebody with PTS might see the world, right? In a really guarded sort of uh, anxious way. So somebody with PTS and a horse can sort of partner together and, and, and see the world in the same way and kind of take care of each other. Time with a horse for a veteran, for example, or somebody who suffered trauma, um, that time with a horse can be very therapeutic. Horses can also help with physical disabilities. My favorite story is this like teenager who was who had so little core strength that he um, his mother had to be in the bathtub with him. And after uh, two years or uh, 18 months of therapeutic riding, he had enough core strength that he could be in the shower by himself, which is an incredible amount of agency that this young man was able to get just because he was riding a horse. And to me, that's incredible. And that's what we're here for. Wilson is from Texas. And when he moved to New York, he missed horses. So he began working here. In fact, many of the volunteers are horse people who want to continue that passion even though they live in a city. And they convert others into horse people, something that can end up changing their lives. Almost every year we have a rider who's classified as nonverbal, right? Who, who says their first word. But it's, it's incredible when this happens because, you know, a kid who, who everybody said, oh, don't worry, they're not verbal. They just, they just haven't spoken yet. And very often their first word is trot on because a trot is, is a little bit faster. And they're like, let's go, I want to trot. Okay, set appointment for Gallup NYC. I'm here in New York, I might as well check it out. Okay, now we introduce you to a family that saved their friends' lives more than 80 years ago. Now they're getting some help in return. CBS News' Jan Crawford has their story. When the Krabby Greek restaurant became a culinary casualty of the pandemic, owner of Vasilios Canaris had doubts about the future. Everything we had, we sunk into that old restaurant. 
he didn't know the past is what would save him. In 1943, you were seven. Canaris' mother Angela and her friend Josephine Vallely Becker were children in Greece during World War II. When the Nazis invaded the country, the Jewish Vallely family was in mortal danger. They were fighting, they were killing people. It was, it was bad. They killed my father's two brothers. At great risk, Angela's parents hid Josephine's family for a year. Do you ever think about what her father did for your family? Oh my God, yes. It was the best thing you could ever do. After the war, both families moved to Baltimore and remained the best of friends. But Angela's family would never accept any payment. Eighty years later, finally a way to give back. After Vasilios lost the first restaurant, Josephine's family pooled their money to help him open a new one. I was just like stunned. I was speechless. My son will never forget them and they are going to continue the friendship for another 80 years. A lifetime of friendships for two families through tragedy and triumph. Tragedy and triumph. Well said. All right, that's our show. I hope this news brightened up your day and lifted you up because it did for me. You guys have a good one. I will see you next time. <laughs>